Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, and it's time for another reaction request. If you have a video that you'd like me to react to, check the description below. There's a link that'll take you to a Google document with all of the relevant information. So today we're going to be looking at more Angry Video Game Nerd. And this is probably actually going to be my longest ever uh, nerd reaction. Because three videos were requested, and uh, the first one is already almost a half hour long. So it's already a longer nerd video to begin with, and then two other videos were requested on top of it for the same request. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm down for it. I, I watch it a lot of nerd already, so I don't mind watch it, watching a bit more for this one. Um, but anyway, what we got is Amiga CD32, which makes sense that this would be a longer one because it is covering a console. Not a console I'm very familiar with, I gotta be honest. I don't know almost anything about the CD32. Um, and uh, then we got uh, Batman Part 1 and 2. So a uh, two-parter about Batman. I don't know which Batman, probably multiple, because again, that's usually the case when he doesn't uh, indicate a console in uh, in the title of the video, is that we're looking at multiple Batman games. And with two parts, probably we're going to be looking at a bunch of Batman games. But uh, anyway, we got the Amiga CD32 Let's go ahead and learn about it. Here we go. I've only vaguely heard of this. Commodore, once the most popular name in the home computer industry. Throughout the yeah. 80s, it held its own against Long industry time giants and etched its place <laughs> in video game history with the VIC-20, Commodore 64, and Amiga Commodore 64. line of computers. Though sadly, as time went on, the company went from competing with the likes of Apple and IBM to just becoming BM. After the video wow. game crash of the 80s, <laughs> companies emerged like Nintendo and Sega mm -hmm. to pick up the pieces and resurrect the dying industry. Commodore would try to hang in there, but it ended up crumbling like weak old cat barf on a carpet. So what went wrong? How could a company Very that descriptive once imagery there. <laughs> the home computer industry be reduced to a small footnote in video game history? You want to know the answer? The Amiga CD32. Yeah. This thing was the straw that broke the camel's back. The shit-caked baby wipe that ruptured the septic tank. After declining sales in the late 80s and early 90s, Commodore decided to take a stab at console production. The CD32 Makes was released sense. in Europe and Canada in September of 93 and slated to release in the US early Did it never even make it? But guess what? It never happened. Commodore wasn't allowed <laughs> to release it in the US until they paid $10 million oh. in back owed patent royalties. On top of okay. that, the system was discontinued only eight months wow, after it was this released, thing. bankrupting the company. This console is such a joke that it ruined one of the biggest computer companies of all time in less than a year. Even if it did come out in the U.S., the original retail price for this monstrosity was four. Definitely a reason I don't know much about this. In '93, thing. nowadays with inflation, ballpark estimate that equals almost seven hundred dollars. You could buy two PlayStation fours for that price. What are they thinking? Who in their right mind would buy this when you can get a Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis for less than half the price? And because I'm the nerd, I'm going to have to check out a stack of these games. <laughs> Look at this. You, you can't make this stuff up. But somebody did. Yeah, that's... Oh, uh, after this, you got to wash your hands because that's gotta you be great. pink eye from touching all this fecal matter. There can't be that many games for him. <sighs> oh, and then you got to adapt. Oh, yeah. Of like, course, it's got to be a... Swears. EU. Bloody cunt. Bollocks. Wank. Wank. Ours. <laughs> the British Bollocks. swears. Cunt. Um. Ri wow, that's. Uh. Why? Wait, the words are right. upside down. Oh, wait, wait, uh, no, oh. No, the controller's upside down. All right, well, let's try <laughs> Danger Streets. Bad design that choices here. Ass. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily the, the bad kind, but. Uh, on the back? Come on. Really? What the? What? Wow. 
What the fuck? It won't start. It won't start. 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 <laughs> How do you start? Oh, that's perfect. I have to hold the disc hatch down just to get the game to spin. What, did I really expect this thing to work? I don't even want to play this piece of fuck to begin with, let alone one-handed holding the thing down to get it to function. There we go. The brand new CD32 add-on. A paint wow. can. It's like the hillbilly cousin of the 32X. So here we go. The first game on the garbage pile. Dangerous Streets. Press the fire button. Okay, well, which button is that? Is it the 312 button or the curly arrow button or the arrow pointing at the line button or the square button? <laughs> Have they ever seen the fucking alphabet? They could have just called it ABCD. Yeah, it's yeah, that green, one. yellow, red, blue. So if you guess the fire button was the down arrow pointing at the line button, you win a prize. And that prize I guess that is, is the footage most of the likely. shittiest fighting game ever made. Right off the bat, this is possibly oh. the worst group of fighting game characters I've ever seen. Looking back at Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, each game had a group of memorable characters like Ryu, Guile, Scorpion, Liu Kang. This game has futuristic Tommy Wiseau, ass cheek lady, <laughs> spring shoe guy, fat guy with his pants on huh? and a Native American guy taking a shit. And there's this guy who was born in Pennsylvania, which just confuses <laughs> the shit out of me. This game is a complete mess. The buttons seem to do random things. The green and yellow buttons are standing punch and ducking punch. The blue one sometimes makes you kick, jump, or glow. I don't know what the hell's going on. What blows my mind is that the game came out in 94. By the time it was out, we already had Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Mortal Kombat 2. I mean, for fuck's sake, that's the same year Killer Instinct came out. How in this sweet name of merciful shit could they fuck up a fighting game this bad by then? This is already one of the worst games I've ever played in my entire life, and it's the first thing I popped in on this system. What was that attack? I don't know what to do. I just mash buttons. But the sad thing, the in-game character looks just as confused as I. And not to mention, I keep winning. Also, this game is running on what is essentially an early PC made into a gaming console. It even says 32 bits on the top of it, but it looks worse than most 16-bit games. Could you imagine spending 400 of your hard-earned dollars plus another 20 or so for this game? So I'm up to the guy from Pennsylvania and he's the cheapest piece of shit ever. <laughs> Apparently there are special moves in the game, but good luck figuring them out. It takes a button combination just to kick. Oh, and when you lose, it's back to the beginning. No continues. I just don't get it. Do people actually set out to make a game this bad? Did someone consciously decide they wanted to take everything that had been done right in video games and empty their colonic contents all over it. The only thing I like about this game is the horrible <laughs> voice samples they use for the versus screen. They're hilarious. All right, on to the next game. Here we go, Super Putty, or Look Out It's Putty. If you don't press okay. start, the game sends you to an unskippable demo mode. Seriously, if you try to hit the start button, it just pauses the demo. Why? I hit the start button because I wanted to start the game, not pause the demo. Why would you ever want to pause a demo? If you waited this long, your punishment is you have to watch this demo. It's actually faster to reset the game. I'm sure it is. And the game itself is a drugged up fever dream. You play as a blue ball who walks around hitting mushrooms with its punching glove boner. And look up there. Pliability? Oh, of course. You know, like health, stamina, energy, pliability. So when you punch these things, for some reason, they turn into babies. And then you eat the babies. Um. You eat the babies or absorb them or whatever the hell he's doing. But if you don't, the babies explode. This game is <laughs> fucked up. up. Huh? The sound in this game is Who atrocious. Came up with this? The sound of the babies crying, the sound when you get hurt, the jumping sound, the constant boinging. I'm going fucking mad, I tell you. Too bad. <laughs> okay. Well, enough of this. 
Next up, we got Morph. It starts off with this horrifying cutscene. This weird kid shows up at this creepy old man's house, and it looks kind of like Doc and Marty if they were crossbred with the Minions. So the kid yeah. stands on a teleporter, so they're doing the fly thing, and the whole thing blows up, turning you into a ball that can shape shift. Yeah. So the game's basically a puzzle platformer where you can transform into different kinds of Isn't balls. This two in a row about abilities. balls that can You have to find a specific item in each level and complete it without using too many transformations. So it's kind of a neat idea. Maybe if it wasn't on the CD32. Next, we got Naughty oh, Ones. Man. It starts with this cutesy cutscene set to the creepiest possible music. Then, at the yeah. end, it has this upbeat reggae tune. The game's pretty much a basic action platformer. Just find the key in each level and then mm -hmm. head to the door. It's not too bad. It kind of yeah, has a bubble-bobble feel to it with the graphics and the gameplay. However, one annoying thing is it uses up as the jump button. Actually, ah. of all the games I've talked about so far, only one game didn't use up as a jump button. And it was the fighting game, the only one where jump should have been up. <laughs> so anyway, wow. this one's okay and gets a pass. On to the next piece of technological torture, beavers. They're a hip band of beavers. God Beaver Mania beavers. hits the UK, but that pisses <laughs> off the rabbits. So here we go. Here's another cute cutscene. A beaver comes home to his family. He just puts his lunchbox or whatever it is on the floor, he picks it up, he puts it down again, and oh, and this mean rabbit comes in and oh, uh, oh, shit. I'm not seeing this, man. Um. No. That didn't happen. What the fuck, dude? Oh, shit! Oh! Boy, is that jarring! It's like these games can't figure out if they want to be cartoony and cute or fucking horrifying. Oh, oh, what the hell? Oh, and look how fast the game starts. If you don't keep up, you die. The edge of the screen kills you. Shit flies at you from any which way, and pretty much anything you can touch can hurt you. You're supposedly yeah. able to do a spin attack, but it doesn't work at all. I can't even beat the first level. And if I didn't already make it clear, the purpose of the game is to rescue your wife, but I don't think this beaver's getting his wife back because <laughs> I can't put myself through any more of this torture. Well, that's it. If you're expecting me to make some kind of beaver joke, no. Because this is high-class internet content. Mm -hmm. Now enough of this poop fuck shit diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, now that I got that out of my system, the nerd always it's time keeps it to classy. move on to the real meat of the CD32. Any fan of first-person shooters knows about the big fucking game of them all, Doom. But have you ever played Gloom? Not at all like Doom. No, this is a totally different thing. This is Gloom. When the game starts, it plays this weird, happy-ass music. Naughty Ones has scary-ass music, but Gloom has happy-ass music, and it plays before every single level. Also, is he gonna kill those guys, or are they his squad mates? They look like they're on the same team. Why not make them a different color if they're an enemy? So, you play as this space marine type guy and kill other space marine guys. It looks horrible, and it's like the main character is severely nearsighted. You collect bouncing balls for guns and baby bottles for health. What, is this like a spoof? Like P.O.'d? Yeah, the game where you're shooting butts. But that was done on purpose as a parody. This one, it's just a fucking watered down piece of shit Doom knockoff. This game's nice and gory though. Every time you shoot someone, they explode into a million pieces. Sadly, it's repetitive as all hell and every level looks the same. In the first one, you just run to the other side of the room and it's over. Imagine completing a whole level of Doom in 10 seconds. Oh, but in the second level, you have to hit a switch before you run to the door. Oh, now it's given Doom a run for its money. When you pause, you can change some of the graphics options. This makes the game run smoother, but it looks even more blurry. Also, you can get rid of the ceiling and floor. I guess it's supposed to make the graphics look better, but it still looks like I ate broken glass and then shit it into my eyeballs. 
and I must emphasize, this was a PC company. This game is giving me a headache to look at, and I think my vision has actually gotten worse because of yeah. it. I'm sued for damages, but I'm pretty sure this company's gone out of business long ago. The only thing I left worth noting is wouldn't the doubt it. option. You have meaty or messy. With meaty, they explode and disappear. With messy, the chunks stay on the ground. Also, it slows the game down after you kill too many people. So, yeah, Gloom is a cheap knockoff that doesn't even do a good job at being a knockoff. On to the next one. Ugh, this one's a double disc. Whoa, so much value. I should have just lit that money on fire and pissed on it. Okay, so we'll start with Diggers. Oh, it's like Lemmings or something, I think. Okay. You go to this guy, click some things, then make your guy dig. It'd be more fun to actually go outside and dig a hole than play this. Fuck it. On to Oscar. Wow. <laughs> Not a lot said about diggers. Oscar. Oh, God, no. Flair, the same company that made Dangerous Streets. Oh. oh now that's a horrible. Well, probably weren't very many de like developers working to be the for the CD32's <laughs> mascot. But being the this mascot console. of the CD32 is like being the mascot for a porta potty company. Actually, I take that back. It would be better to be a porta potty mascot than be featured on this cockamamie console. Okay, let's start. Take 69. Really? This is the first level. They could have put take one, but no, they chose 69 on purpose. Oh, for the yeah. love of fuck, up is jump again. I'm convinced they're playing a joke. So here he is, Oscar the something. He's not quite Sonic. He's not quite Bubsy. He's just Oscar. The game controls worse than it looks. And I keep running into shit because yeah. the backgrounds are such a hodgepodge of vomit-inducing mishmash. The enemies are practically invisible, and I can't even get a minute into the first level before getting a game over. The levels are all based on movie genres, like in Gex or Spot Goes to Hollywood. The first room is sci-fi themed, you fight robots and what looks like the dog Xenomorph from Alien 3. This one's horror themed. There's dogs, chainsaws, and spooky ghosts can't make much progress here. On top of the shitty controls, Oscar runs like he's on ice. This game isn't the worst I've played so far, but that's not a compliment. It's like comparing <laughs> solid shit logs to a diarrhea puddle. They both smell awful, they're both disgusting, but I guess I'd rather pick up a turd log and toss it out than have to sop up diarrhea with a paper towel. Next. Bubba and Sticks, a game by Core Design. Let's find out what's worse, this or Angel of Darkness. Sticks kinda looks like Bizarro Shit Pickle. The artwork looks pretty cool, and the music is alright, so maybe this will actually be a hidden gem. Oh please, let it be good. Oh my god. Oh my god! It's actually good! Pretty cool. Okay. The gameplay is kinda like a puzzle platformer where you have to use sticks to get past obstacles like using him to pry this rock up or sticking him into the wall to use as a platform. Hmm. This part right here is pretty funny. You have to get close to these weird guys without interrupting their conversation and then throw sticks, the character, at them. The graphics are really nice too. It's cartoony and colorful, but not like the rainbow vomit from Oscar. This is actually yeah, yeah, a it looks good game, a lot better. at least until I get to the second level and I can't figure out what to do. And I don't have the time to figure it out, so, oh well, I guess we gotta move on. But I can give this one the nerd stamp of not shit. But now, we're getting down to the shitty gritty. We have Surf Ninjas. Moto Surf! Oh. Moto Surf! There's a That's Surf right. Ninjas they game? a Surf Ninjas tie-in for this thing. Nice word really? on the title screen. Is this a game or a fourth grade book report? Oh, and it's by Flair again. I'm guessing they were the LJN of the CD32. Well, now I know it's going to suck. The first thing you have to do <laughs> is, is choose whether you want to hear sound game? effects or music. Uh, can I have both? The perfect the console barely for it. barely resembles yeah. anything from the movie. And when my complaint is that the game is not like Surf Ninjas, <laughs> then you know we're really in bad shape. Who are you supposed to be? This isn't even a character from the movie. Uh, yeah, that's... supposed to be Ernie Reyes Jr.? Or maybe it's Rob Schneider. I... It's not confirmed, but it's probably true that this was actually another game before they turned into Almost Surf Ninjas. Almost definitely. Because that's what you want to do. If you have a shitty game, might as well make it Surf Ninjas. They probably just had some generic beat-em-up on a hard drive and slapped the Surf Ninjas name on it last minute. Kind of like Doki Doki Panic. because it has Ninjas Doki in it? Doki Panic. 
Oh, that's another real shitty shit joke, but not as shitty as a shitty movie based game based off a shitty movie, Surf Ninjas. Yeah, I know I talk about shit a lot, but I'm staring at shit. If you were looking at shit, would you be talking about butterflies or something? No, I'm looking at shit. We're talking shit. Okay, so I gotta calm myself down a little bit. The gameplay is monotonous. I walk around fighting ninjas who kick my ass most of the time. Oh, and in most games, you die when the health bar goes down, right? Well, in this game, you die whenever the game decides you're dead. Look at okay, this. yeah, that's left, not... But I'm fucking yeah. dead. Most of the time, your attacks don't even register, and when they do, it takes forever and a day to kill the ninjas. Look at this. What is going on here? Oh, wait, what? Did I just rip his heart out? <laughs> that doesn't happen in the movie, does it? <laughs> I gotta find out. I'm gonna make a quick call here. This is Cinemassacre Video, where selection is the name of the game. This is James speaking. How may I help you? <laughs> yeah, okay, I just want to ask you a quick question. Sure thing. Go right ahead. Have you ever watched the movie Surf Ninjas? Yes. Yeah. I just had a chat with a bunch of friends all about that. Did you know that the costume designer was the same in Street Fighter the movie? That would explain all the blue camouflage. Okay, okay, look, 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 look. I, I just want to ask a fucking question. In the movie Surf Ninjas, does anybody rip someone's heart out? Kano style. Um, no, I don't think that happened in the movie. See, I knew it. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Wow. What an asshole. <laughs> Interesting oh, bit there. Guess what? what button do you think the jump button is? Take a Didn't guess. Didn't know that James had ever cameoed oh, in a nerd again. video. <laughs> but this time, they took it a step further. Jump hurts you. Yes, uh, oh. I am not kidding. When you jump, Fall damage from you his get own damaged. Jump? What moron decided it was a good idea to make jumping hurt you in a ninja game? So, the whole point is to find items and bring them to the right places. Like here, you need to bring wax to the surfer who gives you change to give to the hobo so you can get into his alley. The last guy in my way is this dude with the truck who keeps asking you to bring him boxes. Oh, come on, man. There's a box right near you. Are you so fucking lazy you can't just walk over and get the box? Oh, but that's only one of them because there's several scattered all over the place and you have to find them all. So after searching hours for the last one, I found that you need to get a key and then go down to the hobo alley and use it to open this door. But how was I supposed to know that? This level is filled with doors that you can't go in, so when I first passed it, I thought it was just part of the scenery. I had to replay this level eight times, checking every goddamn door wow. in town before I found it. And there it is, the last box. Wait, what? Is that a pixelated naked lady? Oh, yeah, I think it is. Okay, that made it worth it. Next game. <laughs> okay, now we have Kang Fu. Yeah, this okay. is going to be great. First off, we need to talk about this cover art. It's like a shitty colored pencil sketch of a kangaroo with sunglasses, and they must have been pretty proud of it because it's the title screen, too. And not of to course. mention, at the bottom of the cover, they single out the letters G R E. ED. So the company who made this game is called Greed. On the back, it says Wonderful. this game shows the full possibilities of the CD32. Oh <laughs> boy, sure I does. can't wait. Okay. Is it going to start? It takes forever to start up. I thought it was broken because it stays on a black screen for almost two minutes. But that's just how the game is. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, gosh. You could say this is random. You got a spinning ball, scrolling pictures of kangaroos that keep glitching out, and then another black screen, then a picture of a kangaroo, then another black screen, then the high score, then another black screen, and then another kangaroo picture, and then another black screen! I'm not kidding! This is the actual game! Oh, and it's really showing off all the possibilities of the CD32. For real, it's showing exactly how shitty a game can be for this console. After eight and a half minutes, no exaggeration, I finally get to the start screen. And, uh... Um... What? Oh. Out of memory? 
What does out of memory mean? Let me check the instructions. Open door, turn on CD32, insert CD, but wait with closing door till the music has played. Close door and game will boot automatically. Otherwise, it will not boot due to a bug in the CD32, which will not free the memory as it should. What? This is historical. Never, not once, have I ever had a game where the instructions tells you, by the way, this game is really fucked up. So you're going to have to jump through all kinds of crazy hoops to get it to um. work. So now I got to move my paint can, open the door till the music has played, close the door and pop on the paint can. This is not normal, but believe it or not, it actually works now. And after all that, wow. all the loading screens and everything, it turns out to be the worst game of the entire stack. It is ungodly. There is no style yeah. whatsoever. It is a complete mishmash of garbage. Every That's hard to even look looks at. looks like they came from a different shitty game. You fight weird cartoon <laughs> chickens, <laughs> dragon hell? guys with axes, um, umbrellas, giant wasps, slinkies, and bouncing balls all on a realistic digitized backdrop. Like, th this is too much to take in, so I'm just going to give you a minute just to breathe. Okay, you ready for me to continue? I have no idea what to do here. I just jump around shooting a fucking machine gun. Why is it called Kang Fu? If he's not doing Kung Fu, <laughs> That's he's a got good a machine point. gun. <laughs> not really Gosh. very Kung Fu of him. Oh, I'd rather be playing Shaq Fu. I'd rather play U2 Fu and Robin Williams Fu. I thought I knew what bad games were. I thought I was prepared, but I was wrong. Well, that's a uh, image. Oh my god! <laughs> I uh, yeah, that's uh... that game over screen. That is, uh, I thought I've seen everything, but they they, they use a real f photo. You you go from a cartoony kangaroo to a real picture of a kangaroo skeleton in the fucking yeah. Picture. There is nothing you could ever tell me, no proof you could present that could ever prove in my mind that the developers were not psychopaths <laughs> to get on a paint sitting on my CD32 right now. This was given um. a retail release. People were able to buy this at a store. The fact that I bought it now is one thing, but what if you bought this when it was new? What if it was your only game? Did anyone actually grow up with this thing? Imagine <laughs> the psychological effects. <laughs> One more game. It might have spawned a few serial well, killers. It's pretty there. much the same as the Atari Jaguar Zool 2, which I already covered before. It's a basic platformer action game. It's so average, it doesn't even matter. I don't have much else to say about it, so let's just pretend I said nothing. In fact, let's just forget all about the Amiga CD32 which is one of the worst consoles I've ever played. Yeah. It's the equivalent of hyena diarrhea. And you know what hyenas eat? The leftover scraps of dead animals that predators didn't want. So imagine a hyena's decaying intestinal tract spraying liquefied death sauce at its shit chute, and there you have the Amiga CD32. Fuck this thing, watch it go. Hmm. All right. Oh, that's right. I should have tossed this shit, too. Huh? Warning. Do not play track one of this game CD on any audio CD player. Okay. Huh? Why? Well, why not? I have to find <laughs> out. Yeah, if you put that kind of warning on something, it's gonna, just going to make people want to do it. Okay. Interesting. Is this actually ever continued? Is this continued in Batman, maybe? Uh, 
Like, I don't know why we're doing these together. I mean, I'm guessing not, considering the Batman videos are uh, a lot older, it looks like. Um, so, I'm definitely intrigued by that. I don't know where <laughs> what that's all about, but... Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting. Yes, definitely a console I knew absolutely nothing about. Uh, now I know why I never <laughs> knew anything about it. <laughs> it was never actually even released in the U.S., and it sucks. So, um, yeah. But anyway, now we got uh, Batman. Um, not sure if there is a through uh, any kind of through thread here, but. Um, I mean, I love me some Batman, so I'll be interested. I've probably played a few Batman games here and there. Like, I, I, I kind of remember one on the Super Nintendo, maybe, that I might have rented. Um, but, um, yeah, probably there are a lot that I, uh, I mean, <laughs> a lot. Like, basically all of them. <laughs> I didn't play very many Batman games. Maybe one or two. <laughs> so definitely a lot. Um, to learn here, and uh, I'm eager to do so, so let's go ahead and get started with part one. Batman. So this is back to classic in our era. Justice, you gotta be Batman. Let's start Batman with Batman glasses. and the Cape Crusader for the Commodore 64. This game came out a year before the Tim Burton movie, which makes it the okay. only game on our list that's not movie licensed. You get a choice to fight against the Penguin or the Joker, but both games seem to be identical. I never really got far enough to find out. Every time you exit a screen, another panel pops up. I guess they were trying to make it look like a comic book, but it's just awful. Yeah, yeah. The first enemies you encounter are what I think are toy airplanes and gargoyles, or bats, which take shits on you. Yeah, if you look close enough, you can see the little shit bombs dropping out of their asses. Wonderful. The control is weird. As you can see, the instruction manual explains it. To do different punches and kicks, you have to hold the joystick in a certain direction while hitting ah, the button. Ah, yeah, that's... It's uh, also ridiculous trying to hit anybody. You have to be like annoying. a step away. And no matter how many times you hit somebody, they don't die. Die. What the hell? There's also this annoying menu screen that keeps popping up. It took me a while to figure out that I activate this thing by pressing down in the button. So I get to this menu by total accident, and I don't know what to do here. What is all this shit? Restart game? Who the fuck's talking about restarting? Oh, the keypad's busted. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's another thing about the Commodore. It only works when it feels like it. Hmm. Well, anyway, game sucks. Gotta give it the Batman punishment. A Batman. Next is the one which most people know, Batman on the NES. Overall, when it comes to games, the Dark Knight's been treated a lot better than Superman. Because there do exist good Batman oh, games, this and this cool. is one of them. The graphics are dark and stylish, just like the movie. Yeah, for the NES, this is really good. It's kick ass. is addicting, you have a punch and a variety of bat weapons. You have a Ninja Gaiden style wall jump, which is something you really gotta get used to because as the game progresses, it yeah. gets trickier and trickier. There's this one part which I swear you have no choice but to get hit by these spinning gears. Oh. Getting up to the Joker takes a lot of patience, and if you actually beat him, you deserve a medal. Hmm. A good game for the NES library, but a hard son of a What did the Joker summon Next lightning? Up, Batman Returns like, on weird. Super Nintendo. With the release of the movie sequel, many more games came along to cash in on the franchise. 
This one's a lot simpler, just a good old arcade style beat em up. It's mind numbing and redundant, but satisfying as hell. Just beat the shit out of him. There are many versions of Batman Returns, and here's one on Sega CD. It showed off some okay. impressive graphics for the time, like the cinematic shot of Batman behind the wheel in the 3D driving stages. Nice. To tell you the truth, I never made it past these driving stages. It just goes on and on. Boring as shit, next game. I'm Batman. Next hmm. up, Batman Returns for the Atari Lynx. A lot of these early handheld right. consoles had the same problem. You can barely see the screen. You gotta tilt that. Yeah. Way. So this isn't gonna be easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even up to the Game Boy Advance, that was a problem. It's pretty self-explanatory. But goddamn, is it hard? I keep getting hit by dynamite, and I can barely see where it's coming from. And there doesn't seem to be any kind of jump attack. Damn. All right. Well, this one gets the official bat stamp of shit. On to the next game, but first, gotta tell it I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Hmm. Gotta let him know. The Adventures of Batman Robin on Super Nintendo. Yeah, of course they had to make a Batman game based off of every Batman movie that came out, but they also had to do one based off the animated series. It's kind of like a cross between a beat-em-up and a 2D side scroll. You just keep moving hmm. right and batching everybody in your way. But then there comes times when you need a little bit of problem solving to figure out what to do. Sometimes nice. it's kind of annoying, like this part. Cool visuals. I mean, the hell was I supposed to know rather like to the show. A roller coaster. But in conclusion, Nailed the aesthetic. this one you might want to try out. Not a bad game. Let that looks pass. good. Next up, Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo. Now we're in deep shit because this hmm. game is Triceratops testicles. Since the side-scrolling, driving, and beat-em-up thing had already been done to death, my guess is that they were attempting something a little different with this game. As soon as it begins, you'll notice it bears an uncanny resemblance to Mortal Kombat. Yeah! It's literally the same control scheme with all the same moves. Being that it was also made That's by a kinda weird. it makes you oh. wonder why they would repackage a fighting game into a Batman game. I almost expect to see Batman rip someone's spinal cord out. This kind of fun <laughs> style I mean, that doesn't would be... work for a platforming side scroll oh. like this. It just slows things down. Whenever you knock somebody to the ground, you gotta wait for them to get back up again. You hit them again, and it just goes on and on and on. It's also real annoying that up is jump, whereas there's plenty of buttons to choose from. But that's <laughs> yes. the beginning to <laughs> Maybe that's the through thread, just him not liking up is jump. Is. Within the first minute or two, you come to a wall, which is pretty much a dead end. You can't do jack shit. So you figure, okay, I probably gotta go up there. So you try jumping all around, but it's useless. You go in that door try somehow? Try every possible combination of buttons till you find that select shoots this wire out of your crotch. That's ah. real random, right? The select button? But this yeah. Button or the grappling hook, whatever, it doesn't latch on to anything. Almost as if it's just for show. At first, I thought that you just need to stand in the right spot, but no matter where I go, nothing happens. Fuck shit. Get up there! This is fucking bullshit! You think to shoot up, you just press up, but no, it jumps! Sometimes I get it to work by pure luck until I found out that, okay, this is how it works. To shoot up, you press select and up in a very specific way. You have to press select slightly before you press jump. If okay. you do it correctly, it shoots the grappling hook straight up in the air. But if you press them both at the same time, you just jump. That's a good reason why the jump button should not be up! Why can't it be one of the fucking buttons? Having the fucking up button jump is fucking fucked up! If this aimed your grappling hook <laughs> and this jumped, then it would be fine. But no, they gotta be the same button. And on top of that, you have to be standing in the correct spot. And this spot is very precise. You think all that mattered is if you were under the hole. But no, it's like exact. This one magic pixel of a spot. You gotta be right on the mark. So you just lumber all around, trying to figure out where to go, and whenever you access a new part of the game, it says, hold on! Hold on for what? It has to fucking load? It's also interesting to note that you have the option of playing as Robin. But who hmm. would do that? I'm gonna be Batman. <laughs> I guess yeah. the goal is to rescue all the security guards. Yeah. When you untie them, they do this melodramatic sort of pose, like, yay, I'm free! The villains are all stock. It's just guys in flashy suits and guys with chainsaws. Oh, look at that! Chainsaw to the dick! Why does it take so long to kill people? Uh. 
Everything's so dark you can never tell where there's a door. Then you walk back and look for one of those spots where you can use your grappling dick. See, right there, that was just a lucky guess. Another problem is the fucking foreground keeps blocking me. It's like, get that shit out of the way, I can't see what I'm doing. Hmm. I'd rather have a diarrhea dog take a lava dump all over the screen. And just when you thought you had the controls all figured out, you come to this part where you need to jump down. You'd expect to be able to just simply push down. Maybe yeah. Maybe with the jump button. But, oh, that's right, there is no fucking jump button. <laughs> that would be pretty impressive, to be able to press down and up at the same time. Well, anyway, you try every combination imaginable, and guess what? It's down and R. Yeah, R okay. is not even one of the main buttons. Why R? And again, the R button has to be tapped slightly before you... Wow. And sometimes there isn't even a hole to tell you where you're able to do that. Oh. Why is everything so cryptic? Look, this is fucked beyond belief. It's like the <laughs> controls in this game are like something... Doesn't do look very good. Code. Not a basic move that you have to do in order to play the game. Why they program it in such an asinine, ball brain, cockamamie, ridiculous fashion? It's like, geez, there's four buttons right in the front of the controller. Look, that's not enough to work with. Instead, they have to, like, program it, like, all into, like, weird kind of crazy button combinations and shit. It's like, what were they thinking? It's like, up is junk. Select for the grappling hook. Select shouldn't even be part of the game. Select should be like for the menus or something. I mean, jeez, like were they trying to just ruin this game? Just flat out, just fuck it up? Well, they hmm. did. Batman Forever. It sucked back then, and it sucks forever. I bet. <laughs> That's it. That's all the shitty Batman games I can take. <laughs> it's over. Batman! Batman, you wanna play a really shitty Nintendo game, Batman? What how that return of the joke on the Nintendo Entertainment System, yeah, Batman? No, I'm not really Batman, though. You're not Batman! Batman, you're Batman! I'm Batman! <laughs> Come on, Batman, let's play! Come on! <laughs> I'm not playing any more shitty Batman games. <laughs> yes, you are! Oh. <laughs> oh, Batman, let me give you a hand! <laughs> Will the Bat Nerd escape the Joker? What bad games does he have up his sleeve? Tune in next episode, same bat time, same bat channel. Hmm. Well, that was fun. Part one, and uh, none of those look familiar, so maybe I didn't play a Batman game back in the day. <laughs> Unless it's one of the ones we're covering in this video. I guess we'll find out if I see anything that jogs any memories. <laughs> but so far, no. None of these at all look familiar. But, um, here we go. Part two. Why, why Luigi? What a collection of characters. Because the Joker's in the title, I'm playing Batman Return of the Joker on NES. It's a follow-up to the first Batman game on NES. They couldn't wait for the good. next movie to come out, so they had to make an instant sequel. Unlike the first game where you have the option to punch or switch between an inventory of weapons, this game basically gives you one weapon, a bat gun. You can get a lot of upgrades yeah. to this weapon, but I can't help but find it strange that Batman is just going around shooting people with infinite yeah, that's not very Batman. his fists. For an NES game, the graphics are good, and the yeah, music, they are. once again, is awesome. 
Seems like Sunsoft games always have good music. Blaster Master, Fester's Quest. Oh. Yeah, I said that. You can even make Batman dance to the music, because when you press up, he turns his head. For the bat dance! <laughs> I don't know what purpose that has. But when you get to the boss, the music sounds incredibly familiar. When you wash your body, do you use a moldy loofah, a dirty washcloth, or you're that guy that just uses their hands while only scratching? Mega Man 2? Yeah, it does sound like it. Just a lot faster, that's all. Once you get to the third stage, the game gets way too difficult way too fast. You're slipping around on the ice trying not to fall. Who are these, these people? tornadoes keep flying at you. Even after a lot of trial and error, it's still next to impossible. What Batman villain summon the tornadoes? Come on, you fucking tornado piece of shit. I know you're there. Just inching forward. I know you're there. Fuck! There's also the traditional annoying backwards fall bullshit. Whenever you oh. get hit, you fly back, right? You're familiar yeah. with that. But here, even if you're facing in the other direction, you get sucked back into the hole. What in the holy mother of fuck is that about? That doesn't even follow the laws of physics. <laughs> then there's the falling ceiling gag, you know, for you to get by, they have to fall. There's no other option. If you stand under it, it kills you. To get it down, you stand under it. What a paradox. Look at this pandemonium. There's a fucking ceiling waiting to come down and kill me. There's a guy throwing an oil drum. If I try to get out of the way, I get hit by these rotating blades and shit. I take the guy down, and then I try to set off the ceiling trap, and I'm dead. <laughs> wow. Fuck you, motherfucker! So I try it again, and this time I just carefully step to the edge, just taking baby steps, you know. God! This game's fucking brutal. It doesn't even make any sense. Come on, you piece of shit. What? Okay, so I'm trying to jump onto a moving platform while somebody's shooting at me. How the hell does that work? Oh shit. Whoa, I got lucky there. Yeah. I wonder if anyone playtested this. I tried to shoot him from across the hole, but as you can see, I can't. I just gotta get on there. Ass! One more try, I just can't get hit. Come on, come on you motherfucker! Ah! Thank God. And how do you like this? You can actually get blocked by a power-up. But he wow. can still shoot through. That's not fair. <laughs> oh, it's so unfair. <sighs> it's like they deliberately programmed this thing to be a means of torture. There's also a slide move, but I never found a safe time to use it. So half the time, I forgot I had it. The only thing easy about this game are the bosses. Except for the Joker. He's impossible. So overall, it's really not the worst Batman game. It's not really yeah, a bad game it just... in general. It just has some things about that oh, suck. Would so, you like to play a bad game, Batman? How no, about I the Game Boy version? Return of the Joker! <laughs> oh. Have fun, motherfucker! <laughs> okay. Return of the Joker on Game Boy. The game begins, and what does it sound like? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm making all these observations. I guess I just have Mega Man on the mind. So, anyway, it's completely different from the NES version. Your main yeah. attack is punching, but you can also just... collect other weapons. Yeah, yeah, this actually looks more Batman. Too, so it's actually more like the first NES game. But there's also a grappling hook, which is really annoying, because you can never get it to work when you need it to work. It's like Jungle Hunt! Did you ever play Jungle Hunt? Guessing because of the limited <laughs> buttons on the and other times, Game Boy. It just has a mind of its own. The control is overly complicated. It seems they should have just had the wall jump or the grappling hook. Not both. Here there's deadly sewer water rising up. Oh. I'm desperately trying to make my way to the platforms, but instead I keep bouncing around the place. Alright, so I'm just trying to get the power up that's up there. I'm trying to do the wall jump and the fucking grappling hook's going off. Ah, missed again. Alright, here we go. Just want to get... There we go. Okay, see, so I got the power up. Now I just want to land on that thing, but it isn't even... And then the grappling hook goes up. I don't want to go that way. I want to go to the right. Alright, I made it. But now the wall jump like, like, ah, I yeah. like, I didn't want to go back. I want to go to the right. Just fiddly controls. The controls are like trying to get a horse to wipe its ass on an eagle. And I really hate that grappling hook. Okay, now jump. Fuck! Alright, here we go again. Fuck! I swear that these games were programmed yeah. by the Joker. It looks like this oh, could have been a really good Game Boy game. Get up there. But just That's it. I can't play this game anymore. I can't even finish the first Needed some level. tuning to the controls. <laughs> what are you playing, 
Return of the Joker? Did you just play Return of the Joker? Return of the Joker, Return of the Joker. Well, how about Revenge of the Joker for the Sega Genesis? <laughs> I'm hoping he beats this Joker up. Okay, so this is not Return, but Revenge of the Joker. To start off with, it looks promising enough. It's basically a 16-bit version of the NES game Return of the Joker. Hmm. Why does it take so long to destroy the crates? All it is is just a power-up. It should take one shot. It's like in Fester's Quest, all those fucking purple blobs you gotta shoot. Oh, so you have a kick? I got it. Alright, kick for the crates and firepower for everything else. What's with the gargoyle statues? You shoot them and get nothing. What's the point? And why does it hurt you to touch them? Batman can't even touch a fucking statue? Let me get these live gargoyle statues sure. that attack. Oh, die. Shoot him in the head and nothing happens. Shoot him down in the like midsection, nothing happens. Do you kick him? Oh my god. Like, what am I supposed to do here? I just keep shooting them and nothing you just happens. Walk past them or? All right, this doesn't. I'm trying to slide into them. Nothing happens. Oh my god, I'm fucking dead. All right, this time I'm gonna try jumping over. That doesn't work either. I try hitting them in every spot that I can. Okay, so you can kill them. I just don't know how to do it. But come on, you motherfucker! Damn. Okay, so what's with this fucking bullshit? What, do they just die whenever they feel like it? Like, is it a glitch, or is it like some obscure trick that I don't know about? It's just the first level of the game. Again, the first fucking level, and I can't go any further. I've had enough of this catastrophe. <laughs> Well, here we go. Music change. I'm gonna shove these fucking games off your ass. Batman okay. the Joker. Batman Return of the Joker. Batman Forever. Batman Return of the Joker on Game Boy. Just the whole Game Boy. Batman on Commodore 64. Wonderful. <laughs> Holy bad shit. Well, there we go. Yeah, that was fun. And, uh, yeah, I can confirm that none of those games look familiar to me, so I... Maybe I didn't play any Batman games. I don't know why. That's another thing. Like, I mean, I was a, a big fan. Like, I watched... Uh, I remember watching all those Batman movies and uh, definitely really into the cartoon. So, uh, I don't know. Odd. But, um, yeah. Another uh, fun two-part episode from the nerd. Um... <laughs> Really was the only link I can see between uh, this, these Batman episodes and um, and uh, the CD32 was him raging at games using up for the jump button. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, good stuff. Definitely always enjoy the nerd. And uh, these were more good videos. But... Um, yeah, that's all I got for this one. Hope you guys liked the reaction. Let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.